Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about some upgrades I did to this 1948 Delta bandsaw. I did a previous video where I was fixing this bandsaw up and getting it running again, and I'll put a link up here. You can check that out. But this time what we're going to look at is improving the power. We're going to talk about the blade choice. We're going to talk about making it a little safer by putting a belt guard on that I made by hand, and then also talk about the dust collection. So stick around. Here we go. Here's the original motor, and I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see the tag. What it looks like, you can probably see there, is a half horsepower, 1725 RPM. This motor is in great shape, it still ran really well. The only thing is, it was a little underpowered for me doing any kind of resawing. I wanted to put a bigger blade on here, so I needed to step it up. And what I found, luckily, was this motor, and by comparison, you can see the size difference here. And this is an old Dayton motor that I got at a farm auction. Here's the old tag on the Dayton motor. You can see this is a one horsepower motor, so it's twice the power and this one's a little bit faster at 1740 RPMs. Most of these old motors, you're gonna see, you can run them on 110 or 220, and they'll have a wiring scheme that you might have to change the wiring a bit, but you'll be able to run them off either. To wire this in, I had to reconfigure it a little bit. I had to drill a hole right here, and I ran the, the wiring up to this light switch, and that was there originally. So I really didn't have to do too much modification. I think I had to drill I think I had to drill different holes in the base to accept those bolts. So when I got the saw, it was missing a belt guard. So I wanted to make sure I had something in place there because my daughter is down here in the shop with me and she occasionally is walking around, not usually while I have the machines running, but for safety, I wanted to make sure that this belt was not exposed. And this is what I came up with. So I'm gonna take it apart and show you how that works. And you can see I wanted to keep it open so I could see the pulleys, um, keep it more mechanical looking and I had a piece of plexiglass here from a pro another project that I used to do that. So to remove the cover, I just need to remove these four screws. So when I turn this around carefully, without everything falling off, you can kind of see what I did here. I have some spacers. I have an old piece of an aluminum, hollow aluminum tubing that I had. I cut these spacers to fit in there, and they fit over these bolts and there's a washer. Now I had this piece of plexiglass that I cut on the bandsaw. I got this from the scrap yard and I used that to replace the backboard of the basketball net. So I had a piece that was left over and I was able to cut this out of there. And then what I did is I drilled holes and I tapped these holes to accept these screws and I just used screws and washers and I had to do that carefully so because this is thin material it's about a quarter inch. So to make sure that I did it centered as carefully as I could. I had some of this metal left over. I think it's called hardware cloth or metal cloth or something like that. But you can get it in different size um, depending on the size of the squares here. And I had some of that left over and I thought I could use that to form the outside edge. And what I was trying to do, again, was to make sure that I had some visibility of the belt. I wanted to see the belt still moving. I thought that would be kind of cool if I could use the materials I had to do that. To reduce vibration, I'm using this link belt, and you can actually get these at Harbor Freight for a decent price, and they are made in the United States. For the backing plate here, you can see I just have this piece of wood, and I believe this is a piece of sassafras that I had from another project. And you can see that I have routed out the edge of it so to have room for the belt to go around the edge. And it's about a half inch thick. It's a little thicker in the middle so that I have room for those bolts that go through there. And then the bolts, you can see, I'll zoom in here a little bit. I have some washers and spacers. This time the spacers, some copper tubing. But that's going to tie into those two holes that are drilled into the back of the stand. This is the original stand. And these holes would have been where the part of the original cover would have attached to. Here's a better look at the board that backs it up. And you can see the only place that's thicker really is in the middle section here where I needed to run the bolts through. I wanted to make sure that was a little thicker. Also because in the back, I was using these um, anchors here to drive the bolts through. And I just have a, a wooden dowel here that helps to keep it off and so it doesn't, there's no attachment point for it at the top here. So that wooden dowel just helps to keep it um, so it's not moving around and floppy from the top. When I reattach it, I just have to make sure that the belt and pulleys have clearance, and if there's any issues, I can always loosen the bolts up slightly, move it over, and then tighten it down. 
And really the only solid attachment point to the base here is with those bolts that run through and then tighten it all down. So you have to make sure it's all centered and not rubbing when you do that. So I'm going to do that next. The last thing I did was order a new blade for this, and this is a three quarter inch Timberwolf blade. This is three TPI, and some subscribers recommended I go with a higher quality blade and it would get a better cut. They definitely were right. That combined with the new motor made the world of difference. This has no problem now going through thicker material and cutting through almost anything. So I'll show you what that cut's like. Last thing I want to leave you with here is dust collection. And you can see here that I have a dust collector port attached to the bottom here. And this I used, on the bottom, I used a piece of stove pipe that I cut and bent and I made that the bottom kind of hopper. And then this just friction fits on there like that. So I have one main hose as my dust collector in my shop because I have a small shop. So I hook that up here. On the side here I have a big magnet. This large magnet holds this in place. And again, this is a piece of stove pipe that I cut to fit up around there, around the guide, to try to trap as much dust as possible and get it to go down like a chute down along the side here. I attached a piece of rubber here to seal up this joint. Because right here, there's a gap that goes along here, and a lot of that dust I was finding was coming out and, and making a mess like this down along this area, right into my switch, down into the motor. So, so this seemed to solve the problem. I put this, cut this piece to fit and seal up that gap with that piece of rubber right there, sealing the gap. And I use this strong magnet to hold it in place right there. So I'll turn the dust collector on, I'll clean this up, make a few cuts, and we'll see what kind of dust we have left over. In the last clip I showed you where I was resawing there, you saw there's a lot of dust that ended up on the top table. This time I'm going to turn on the suction and we're going to see how much of a difference that makes as far as the amount, total amount of dust you get on the top table and also down below on the frame near the switch. So as you can probably see, I still get a lot of dust up top on the table, but the biggest difference is down by the switch. This chute really does help to get the dust going down into that hopper area, and I get very little dust in this area going down into the switch and down into the motor. So that's a, that's a good sign. That's what I was trying to really catch. It's hard to catch all of the sawdust on the top because some does come out the top of the work and onto the table, but for right now, I'm pretty happy with having this set up down here below. All right, well, there you have it. There's some upgrades I made to this saw. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Leave me some questions if you have down there. Hit that thumbs up if you like this video, and I'll see you on the next one.